you're tuning into how automation with Zapier can streamline your business operations. We've got a special guest, Kelly Goss, joining us this evening. That's Kelly right there. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm fine, Eric. Thanks very much for um, having me here. <laughs> I'm really excited to talk about my favorite topic. Yeah, yeah. Automation. You know, what's funny, guys, is that we did a test uh, a couple of days ago, and this whole Dimeo <laughs> webinar thing worked perfect. In fact, I was the one that was experiencing issues, and uh, everything worked fine <laughs> on Kelly's end. We get in tonight, and uh, literally like 10 minutes ago, uh, we couldn't get the presentation working on her end, but I think we've got that problem solved. And uh, with that said, right. before I hand it over to Kelly, I have a couple of questions for Kelly just so that you guys can get to know Kelly a little bit better. Uh, but if you don't know already, Kelly is a, uh, a business process automation specialist. She's also the author of Automate It with Zapier and the founder of Solva, an agency that helps businesses streamline, the, streamline their business operations uh, using different systems and uh, automated processes. Kelly, first question I have for you tonight, favorite place to vacation to or would love to go back and visit uh, that you visited before? What, what is that location? Um, actually, easy, easy answer, Japan. I loved <laughs> Japan, honestly. Um, and if you, I mean, I don't know if your next question was gonna be, what did you love about Japan? Uh -huh. um, onsens, so the hot springs, yeah. that, that was like my favorite thing. Okay. It was amazing. Okay, I had a feeling you were gonna say, cause everything seems like everything's automated over there. <laughs> you know, they have processes and systems <laughs> oh, yes. and, um, I can contest. I went there one time and I was waiting for the subway and people started forming a line behind me, um, waiting for the train and people were forming a line behind me. And uh, this was so weird because I was living in New York City at the time. And uh, this was like, you know, a different planet uh, for where I came from. <laughs> a second question for you is what is a specific dish or a food or a meal that you dislike but members of your family or close friends or your significant other likes to eat. What is that dish that you dislike? Oh, another easy one, mushrooms. <laughs> What's wrong with mushrooms? Well, actually there are a few things with mushrooms. So uh, I, I grew up in, uh, in Zambia in Central Africa and um, there are a lot of wild mushrooms available, you know, to, cook and eat and my mom always used to cook wild mushrooms and the sm the smell was just awful for me i mean they've got quite a strong smell so i've never liked mushrooms at all and like when i moved to the to the uk um even the thought of just really bland button type mushrooms that actually don't have very much flavor just really never appealed to me. And I think the consistency is like, it, I could imagine it'd be like eating a slug. And I've never liked snails either. So the mushrooms, definitely. <laughs> Smell for wild mushrooms and the consistency. It's not even the taste, it's just yeah, the consistency. Yeah. So, I know yeah. what you mean, I'm indifferent. It's like if they're there, I'll eat them, but hey, if they're not there, I don't care, you know? Yeah, I'm indifferent towards mushrooms. Okay, before we jump in, uh, everybody, quick question for you guys. If you could just put in the chat room whether or not you're currently using Zapier, that would be fantastic. You can just say yes or no. Uh, that just gives us some indication of where everybody's at when it comes to automation. Uh, the other thing too is at the end of the presentation, we are gonna just gonna take a couple of minutes to share some exciting news. We are releasing Bonjour testimonials Today, if you are a Bonjuro customer, it is now on your platform. We've made it very easy to collect and gather text and video testimonials from your audience. And I just want to take a couple of minutes to, uh, to uh, share that, that news with you. You probably got an email already, but I think it's very exciting uh, because you'll be able to manage all your testimonials in one place in the Bonjuro platform and be able to publish them with ease uh, wherever and whenever. So that said, uh, why don't we just take a quick look at the chat room here and let's see here. I, I see some people, you know, there's a few yeses and a few noes. Like Christine said some. Rich, you're using Zapier. Jack, no. Ellie, no. Um, Bonnie, you've got an account. You've got a lot of apps and the API is built in. Christine, you created your project. 
Okay, so it's kind of a mixture right here. And um, I think for this presentation, we're going to get a good overview of what Zapier is, what it can do for your business. And there's also going to be some real cases, use cases that Kelly's going to share. So with that said, let me hand it over to you, Kelly. Thank you, Eric. Another quick question, technical question with you know the issues with the slides. Just want to make sure that you can see my screen okay and you're just seeing the slides, you're not seeing any anything else because uh, I've got like multiple things open. Uh, people, it looks like Jack said, yeah, he can see the slides. And we can't see a small window of you too, Kelly, so we're good. Oh, good. We're good. All right. Okay, great. Okay, cool. Well, Thank you very much, Eric and Bonjoro, for um, hosting this webinar today. And it sounds like from everybody in the chat that um, we've got a variety of people here. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to give you lots of insight into automation in general, but also uh, using Zapier. And I've also got some Bonjoro um, automation stuff in here as well. So, um, I guess just a little bit extra uh, about me. Um, I'm Kelly, as uh, Eric has mentioned. I'm a founder of uh, Solver and also chief problem solver, chief automator, I have many titles, um, and uh, author of Automate It with Zapier. I'm a business process automation specialist, Zapier certified expert, Pipedrive certified expert and Zero certified um, advisor. And hopefully those are all tools that some of you have, have heard about. And my um, agency, Solver, is a no-code automation consultancy that's based in London uh, in the UK, which is where I am right now, uh, not in Japan, unfortunately. And uh, my team and I help micro, small, and medium-sized businesses around the world to um, improve their productivity with better processes, optimized systems, and automation. And we're also just about to launch a training academy to help our students to learn about improving systems and processes with no code automation. Um, so what are we gonna cover today? So let's get started and have a look at, at each of these. So um, we are gonna have a look at what business process automation is how it can help with productivity, uh, what the benefits of automation are. I'm also gonna go through some real life examples um, of how automation can be used. And uh, we'll also take a look at some no code platforms, not just Zapier, just to give you an overview of those. And finally, we're gonna get started um, with actually using Zapier to automate some processes. So I'm gonna just uh, ask a question to everybody. And um, Eric, if you wouldn't mind jumping in and answering, um, just picking out a few um, answers. What would you do with an extra hour in your day? It's just a very general question. If you had one extra hour in your day, what would you do with that? So I can't see the chat. So Eric, if you wouldn't mind, um, okay. <laughs> any Paul, answers? Paula said more work. More work. Yeah, more You're work like here. Uh, James said serve more clients. Uh, Roger said walk along the river. Nice. Uh, Kalita said rest more. Rich said watch more fun demos like this one. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and now they're really coming in. Send more bonjouros, get more clients, figure out how to save more time, more clients and sales. Sleep or get a hair appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could do with one of those. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this word means. Maybe you do. More reverie. Um, is reverie. Reverie. Uh, don't know what no idea. <laughs> um, you know, an extra hour, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know, Kelly. I mean, I feel like I would try to get some rest. That's, that's maybe. I, Everybody I, needs I, more rest. A little bit more rest because I don't think I'm getting enough. Uh, anybody know what reverie means? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. See, can, that one's lost on me. Oh, okay. James says it means party. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Right. Okay, great. Okay, so um, some great answers there. So 
I mean, he, here are a few things that I would, uh, would, would think about. So maybe you want to bunch all of those hours together and go and sip some cocktails on the beach or go for a run or spend some extra time with your kids or the family. Um, or maybe that's going to be an extra hour that you want to spend making your customers feel more special, like, you know, sending them on bonjouros or uh, something else. Um, but whatever it is, there's no better time than now to use automation to help you and your team members and the business overall to be more productive and get back time in your day. And I know what I would do. I would definitely be going with the first option, which is the cocktails on the beach. So um, let's talk a little bit about business process automation. So now every successful business strives to make the most of their resources and improve productivity so that there's more time for increasing revenue. And the reality is that many companies have got systems that probably don't communicate with each other directly. And as a result, processes that are really manual, time consuming and super prone to error. But fortunately, we live in a time where technology is continually evolving to help us to make our work easier. And now more than ever straightforward to implement ourselves and cost effective to run. And by introducing appropriate business tools, um, technology business tools and connecting those tools together, automating manual and repetitive tasks, businesses can significantly increase productivity. So what is business pro uh, process automation? I'm just going to use this definition from Wikipedia, just going to read it to you. Business process automation or BPA for short is the automation of business processes through technology, allowing businesses to reduce costs and increase productivity. And uh, BPA essentially is all about using technology to improve the way that we work by automatically performing repetitive tasks that would typically require human intervention. And it ultimately focuses on the human element in the process rather than the actual applications or technology that uh, is being used. And of course, those tools are going to be fundamental to do um, the job and they do need to be the right ones for the job. However, the real goal is to help the people using those systems to be more productive, to focus on the tasks that truly matter for the success and growth of a company, like interacting with customers and providing exceptional customer service. So basically the tasks that only the humans can do. So why should we even be bothered about using automation in a business? Well, there are loads and loads of benefits, but let's just cover the top four, which I feel are the most important. So more time to increase value. So essentially automating repetitive processes means that the team will no longer have to deal with them. That means that you'll be focused on the work that creates more value and increases turnover for the business. And then we've got higher employee satisfaction. Uh, repetitive tasks are really bad for motivation and enjoyment of work. I'm sure everybody can agree that. And no matter how you look at it, no one's going to enjoy doing grunt work all day. Um, and if such things can be automated, then everybody's gonna be happier doing more meaningful work. Then we've got minimizing human error. And uh, regardless of how much attention to detail we all have, we're all human still and we make mistakes. And there's always going to be that small chance that somebody forgets to do something. An email might be left unsent, for example. And the consequences of that could be anything from, you know, minor to really catastrophic. So the right software will remind you of your tasks on um, a regular basis. And then we've also got um, visibility on business performance. The more efficient your processes are, the more likely you will have rel readily available information on your business performance. And it'll also be easier to produce and collate management reports automatically to understand how well a business is doing. So let's go over a few examples of where business process automation can help you to get rid of manual tasks and increase productivity. Um, so for example, if you're posting the same information on multiple social media channels, if you're inputting new web form leads into uh, your CRM or a spreadsheet manually, if you're 
uh, manually importing sales information from an e-commerce software into your accounting software, if you're collating reporting information from numerous sources, and then there are thousands of more scenarios that I'm not uh, listing here in the slide, but for example, routinely moving documents between apps and folders, adding meeting events to calendars, following up with leads, creating sales proposals manually. Those are all examples of where business process automation can help. And we're going to go into that in a bit more detail a bit later. So let's just take a look at a, a couple of case studies, uh, real life case studies to highlight the benefits of business process automation. So IQ Glass um, is one of the UK's leading architectural structural specialist glazing companies. And they use employed and self-employed glass fitters who are overseen by a team of project managers and uh, they are then supported by warehouse staff. The sales and management teams are based in an office alongside others who perform admin and finance support functions and duplication of data um, used to be very time consuming, caused human error, gaps in the process and lack of visibility across different departments. And by automating their processes, they save a huge whopping 45 hours a week um, on average, delivering a host of other ben benefits, not just the time saving, but also having up to date information in different apps for everybody to see, calculating overtime accurately, having better reporting visibility, managing their leads more effectively, giving staff more time to focus on their jobs to be more productive. And this is um, a great example of how spending a little time on improving processes, not just automating them, but improving processes, um, developing proper system integration and automation can deliver really big results. Um, and then we've got Ascent Dental Group, um, also based in the UK. They've got um, 36 reception and patient care staff, plus 35 dentists across four practices. They wanted to implement automation to increase productivity, reduce manual administration tasks and improve communication with their patients. And it was vital that the personal touch that was given by the reception staff was always maintained alongside having a significant increase in productivity. They now automate their lead capture and nurturing with automated SMS emails and call reminders, as well as appointment reminders, onboarding, missed appointments, reminders and reporting. And as a result, they have more productive staff that can spend more time with their patients rather than spending it on admin. They have better reporting data and their leads don't fall through the cracks. So they have um, increased their revenue since implementing their new processes and they can totally focus on growth rather than having mundane repetitive tasks weighing them down hey kelly out of curiosity how many um do you remember how many different uh tools or applications that the dentist uh this office was using uh, so yeah, so they they actually don't use that many tools. So they actually use Pipedrive for their CRM. Uh, they use another um, software called Dentally to manage their um, their patient bookings. Uh, they were using Google Sheets for reporting and Google Data Data Studio and and a few other things other than emails. Um, so actually not too many tools in there but they actually you know by bolting on other things like being able to send out sms's yeah. um yeah. and sending out their email automate um emails automatically and that was just using gmail not even having to use a, a marketing automation system oh. so yeah. yeah um and then another example which isn't really a case study this is just kind of to to give you an idea of uh time saving and money savings at the same time so um the other examples that we looked at are kind of larger companies with higher volumes of transactions um and tasks running but if you're a smaller business the benefits of automation are actually often more impactful to a business owner that wears a lot of hats um so one way to demonstrate this is really to kind of talk about the increase in turnover that you could achieve if you were billing one extra hour a day because you've got automations that you've got in place. So, for example, if you're a service provider that 
charges $50 an hour and you save one hour a day with automation, which is actually quite significant for a small business, that equates to about $250 of additional um, billable time per week um, in a five day week. And, you know, if you added that up over the year, that would be like 13 grand in a year if you didn't take any holidays, obviously. So who, who doesn't want to add that extra money to their, their billable time? So this is just an example, a, concept, a conceptual example. So um, the other side of it, the flip side could be if you're um, t that extra hour in the day could give you a shorter working day and week and more downtime, like we talked about earlier on in terms of what everybody would want to do with that extra hour. And these extra hours also give an opportunity to scale cost effectively without having to budget for more manpower and staff salaries in order to grow. So just an extra example there. So um, just moving on a bit. Um, now, before we can start exploring the practical aspects of how automation um, can be used to increase productivity, we need to understand a little bit about how business applications are connected together and how they communicate. So um, one thing that uh, you might have already heard about is something called an API. Um, an API, which is an application programming interface, is a means by which multiple software programs can communicate with each other. It essentially acts to allow data from different systems to pass between them. And when two software programs are connected in this way, by an API, they're said to be integrated. And when an integration exists, this allows specific requests to be sent by one app producing a response in another app. So for example, um, by integrating a spreadsheet with a CRM, um, we could allow those two business applications to communicate with one another and then automate tasks where possible to increase productivity. So you might want to create a new contact in your customer database, such as Salesforce or Pipedrive, um, when a new row of data is added to a spreadsheet app like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. And now I'm sure it's not a surprise to anybody that building an API integration requires software programming and development skills and can be a lengthy and costly process. However, uh, most applications that you're currently using in your business processes probably have uh, an app marketplace, like you can see here with the HubSpot app marketplace. And this generally lists uh, different applications with which that particular app will integrate with. And these applications that are listed in these app marketplaces or ecosystems essentially have um, integrations that are created using the APIs to enable these two or more apps to communicate with each other. Um, so as you see here, we've got the HubSpot app uh, marketplace, uh, Bonjoro also has an app marketplace, and you'll see that in the HubSpot one, you've got uh, just a few examples here, Gmail, Google Calendar, HubSpot for WordPress that integrate with HubSpot. Now, Software providers invest lots of time and money and technical skills in building and maintaining these native integrations. And generally, these providers will create an integration that satisfies the highest priority needs of most users to automate the most frequently used types of activities. And they may also prioritize integration development resources on other more commonly used applications rather than smaller, less popular apps. So in some cases, a user of that software might um, need to connect another tool that's not listed in the app ecosystem, or it might need to accomplish a specific task that's not available with that existing a native integration. And under those circumstances, a business could employ a programmer, developer to write code to create a custom integration with the API provided by that software provider. But for most companies, the process of developing a custom integration is, isn't financially viable. It's expensive. Therefore, there's a reliance on what integrations are available in these app ecosystems and how flexible they are. Now, this is where we come on to this topic of the no-code revolution, because thankfully, as 
technology has developed over time, it's now possible to create digital processes without the need uh, for writing any code. Therefore, anyone can learn how to build a website, create email templates, connect their systems using drag and drop editors in a lot of cases. And these editors give you the ability to add and remove blocks and templates rather than writing code in a computer programming language. And instead of needing to use a developer to write this code, the average person with basic IT skills can create these processes themselves. And these advances are coined the no code revolution as, uh, as the title says there. Um, and software providers are now actually pushing forward to develop no code solutions to help people that are not in the IT uh, field to execute tasks that could only previously be done by software engineers. So no code connector platforms and tools that we're going to talk about in a minute are actually part of these techn technology solutions and they allow you to automate and manage your business processes without writing code. And the tools essentially act as a bridge between thousands of different applications that may not have any direct integrations with each other or where the event requests are a little bit more limited. And they enable users to build business specific workflow automations with a visual editor using pre-built integrations to seamlessly perform manual and repetitive tasks without human intervention. So that kind of essentially means that we no longer need advanced technical skills to be able to use the power of integration automation. So here are a few different connector tools that um, are currently available on the market. There are loads more and there's lots more that are emerging all the time. So we've got Make that uh, was formerly called Integromat. We've got N8N, Zapier, Automate.io, um, IFTTT, which you know lots of people may have used for kind of personal use many years ago, and uh, Power Automate. Um, and there are obviously pros and cons for each uh, for using each one of them. But as you probably can tell, I love Zapier, and I know that it's actually the easiest one of all of them to use. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and Zapier connects with over 4,000 applications now. So Zapier has native integrations with over 4,000 applications. It's got a pretty powerful free version, um, and that allows you to get started and see how easy it is to use. And the paid versions of Zapier allow you to do a lot more, including um, creating multi-step processes, access to premium apps. And those are just essentially a few apps that you have to be paying for um, on the Zapier plans, paying for Zapier to be using those apps, like Salesforce, for example, Zero. that's another example. Um, and it also, on the paid uh, versions, allow you to add additional task automations per month. Um, it's pretty user friendly. Um, and for every application, it suggests popular integrations, which um, is really useful for in inspiration, which again, we're going to talk about um, shortly. So um, before we actually have a look at the um, using Zapier, let's talk a little bit about implementing automation. So some, some best practices for implementing it. Now, um, although automation functions to make processes work better, it's essential to bear in mind that applying automation to an already inefficient process is going to just magnify that inefficiency. So as a whole, business process automation really requires you to kind of take a step back and look at your systems and processes holistically, understand and simplify them where you can, optimize your system use and use native features and integrations where possible, and then identify what systems can be connected together. And then only should you be looking at um, how you can actually um, benefit from automation there. So I've kind of talked over my uh, steps here already, uh, as I've been talking through. Um, but essentially, moving on from this, so if we just kind of recap, identify your systems, map your processes, simplify and optimize, identify what systems can be connected, and then uh, decide on what tasks can be automated. And Kelly, I think you have a couple of resources that we're going to be giving out later uh, at the end of the presentation that can help with um, 
with mapping out your business processes is, mm -hmm. yep. Yes, lots of resources coming. Fantastic. When I remember, I'll, t I'll, I'll, I'll mention to, to drop them in the chat <laughs> when I remember. Um, so when we get onto the, the kind of mapping processes uh, bit here, we, we don't have to spend a lot of time and effort doing this. This is just really a simple brainstorming exercise that you could do with all the key people who are involved in the process. Um, like the picture shows there, use post-it notes, a whiteboard. Uh, you could use something like Miro, which is a digital whiteboard tool. Um, and what you want to be doing is looking at the top level processes, such as your marketing, sales, operations, and your finance, break those down into granular tasks, flesh them out, cut out, cut out anything that's unnecessary to improve the process, and then um, identify what you can automate. So for each business function, you want to make a note of all the different apps that you're using in the business um, and where you're using them as part of your process. And you'll also want to think about which apps are core to the business. You'll then want to document what you and your team do step by step in each process, identify what you do manually and repetitively, what you could automate if you had a suitable integration between those apps. And um, you also want to make a note of where each task falls in the process and what apps are associated there. Um, and when you're mapping the processes out visually, that's going to save you a lot of time when you try to automate. Um, and the easiest thing to do is actually explore your customer journey from start to finish. And that's actually going to cover 80% of your business critical tasks and help you to understand what top priority tasks um, can be automated. So um, let's now kind of take a look a little bit about uh, core uh, apps that you might have in your, your business um, ecosystem. So um, before you start looking at connector tool integrations like Zapier and automations, you'll want to really understand what core apps in the business can connect natively with the apps that you have. So you want to have a look at the app marketplaces first and test out these native integrations as well as any um, inbuilt automations that you have available uh, within those tools before you start using connector automations. This is really important because um, often native integrations are free to use, probably part of the packages that you're paying for, and it will save you money down the line um, without having to spend extra on uh, higher subscriptions in, in connector tools. So um, once you've identified the tasks that you think are going to be good candidates to, to automate, you can check out um, whichever connector tool you're using. But in this case, we're just going to talk about Zapier. So you can have a look at the Zapier ecosystem, which is available at zapier.com forward slash apps. Um, and you can see what kind of integrations you can use. So each app has got its own integrations page, and it gives you details of all the dis different possibilities um, that you could use to automate. And we're going to show this uh, in a little bit more detail shortly. So um, let's get started um, and just have a look at Zapier. And uh, so first of all, if you don't have a Zapier account, you can sign up for a 14-day free trial at zapier.com um, with no commitment. And we're just going to do a few basics so that you understand the language that I'm using as we go through. So um, first few things that we want to know is what a trigger is. So a trigger is an event that starts your workflow. An action is the event that does something somewhere in uh, a particular app. A task is a successfully performed action. And a zap, uh, so zap and zap here. And by the way, actually, I should mention, people always ask me this, what, how do you pronounce Zapier? Um, you pronounce Zapier as Zapier, and you'll see if you go into the Zapier website that it, uh, they have a little tagline at the bottom of the page that says Zapier makes you happier, so it rhymes. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, so going back to Zap, um, a Zap is the workflow. So it's actually the 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 step-by-step -step, um, workflow that you would build out which involves one trigger, as you can see here, and one or more actions. So let's now um, 
just have a look at some information on the Zapier platform and I've pre-recorded a short video here uh, to save me from logging in and out of different platforms. Um, so I'm just going to play this in a second and walk you through um, bits of Zapier that are going to be relevant to you. Um, so let's have a look at this. And so if you want to search for a particular app, you just have to use the search tool at the top. And this is actually the Bonjoro integrations page. If you scroll pretty much down to the bottom, you'll see a whole list of triggers and actions that you can use within your workflows. So some examples are going to be Bonjoro created. Um, and we've also got actions like create um, a task, a to-do within Bonjoro, or we've got Bonjoro sent, which could start off a, a workflow. And then a little bit higher up, you've got a list of popular workflows that you are pre-built and they're templates that you can actually use in a couple of clicks to get started with using um, Bonjoro and whatever other um, tool. So say, for example, Active Campaign. And if you scroll a little bit further up, you can actually put in the app that you want to try and understand how you can connect the two. So in this case, Active Campaign. And it will show you a list of different popular zaps or uh, workflows that can be used as templates. And it'll also show you a whole list of triggers and actions uh, that are possible to, to use. Um, so just a few examples here, create task, deal, uh, deal task created, completed, um, et cetera. So, um, if you wanted to, to find this list, as I said, there's, there is a search bar in, in Zapier that you can use to, to do that, but you can also just go to zapier.com forward slash app for um, the main list there. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was just to give you an example of a, a workflow that we could actually put in place with, with Zapier. So um, let's just say that our business in question uses Pipedrive CRM to streamline their sales process. And when a deal is won, they have an automation within Pipedrive that creates an onboarding activity or task for a salesperson. And as part of that onboarding process, the salesperson sends a bonjoro to welcome the new customer and explain the next steps. They also need to add the customer details to a spreadsheet for reporting purposes and then create a task within Trello for their customer success team to take over. So the existing process uses various manual steps, as you could probably imagine, and um, the salespeople often forget to do things when they're really busy. So let's have a look at how we can automate this. So the first thing we need to do is have a look at our core apps and try and understand what, uh, whether or not our native integrations can kind of accomplish this. So if we have a look at the Bonjoro integration with uh, Pipedrive here, which is just launched, you'll see you've got a bunch of triggers and an action that we could use. So the triggers person added, deal added, deal stage updated, um, and which are all really, really useful for a lot of um, use cases. But in this particular case, we want to use an activity to trigger um, the workflow. But we also can use, we could use this action here, create Bonjoro, but we're actually going to build this out in, um, in Zapier because um, we can then bolt on the other parts of the workflow in, in this scenario as well. So having a look at the Pipedrive Zapier integration, you can see that we've got new activity. We could also use activity matching filter, which is next to it, and um, create a filter or a list within Pipedrive, which is quite common in, in CRMs, um, and use the workflow that way. But for this particular example, we'll just use new activity. So let's just have a look with this video and see how this is going to work. So in the main dashboard, you can actually add in the two apps that you want to connect. So Pipedrive in this case, and Bonjoro, which is the first part of our workflow. And then you can select the trigger um, which will be new activity and the action that we want to use, which is create a task in Bonjoro. And there's a pre-built workflow there that we can use, uh, which makes it really easy um, if you're a new user. So what we would need to do is connect our apps, 
set up the zap and turn on the zap. But we're going to do this all through this really easy uh, process here. Um, we've already got our pipe drive account connected, but you could connect a new app there. Um, and you'll also note that on that last um, bit there, it did show about how Zapier actually connects different apps and what kind of security measures they use. So that's worth having a look at if you're a new user. Um, and then we want to connect our Bonjoro account. And this is just demonstrating that you know I can be logged into my Bonjoro account and actually authenticate the connection straight through um, Zapier. Uh, ignore the fact that I've got multiple there is just to demonstrate. Um, and then I can select which um, different fields I want to pull through information for. So I've got email address and workspace, which are required, first name, last name, and also the reason um, in my Bonjoro uh, task. And now I just need to map the different fields. So just by clicking on the field, um, it brings a drop down list of all the different fields that I can bring in from my pipe drive activity. So I'm selecting email, and in the next view, I'm selecting first name um, and then last name. And you can type in uh, details to be able to search uh, for information. Uh, so I'm searching for person last name in this case. Just took a while. <laughs> so then, um, yep, so we've got person, last name, and then we've got the workspace that we want to use, and um, which is just taking a little bit of time to load. And then um, I'm going to put in my reason, which in this case, I'm just going to type, use the um, subject from my um, task or activity within Pipedrive. And then all I need to do is click on next. Uh, and by the way, you could add in extra details here, but I'm going to show that to you in another uh, video in a second. So those are the details I'm going to pull through. And I can now check whether or not that's created my task within Bonjoro, which it has for John Smith onboarding task. And that's straight away um, through that, that test. Um, so all we need to do now is essentially turn our zap on to make it live and we can start using that with with live data okay so next we are going to um have a look at adding a did you want to say something eric fantastic example if anybody has any questions feel free to just uh submit those through the chat room there you know with zapier um just like Kelly pointed out, we do have a lot of direct integrations with different tech stacks, but some in some cases, um, you're looking for a trigger that the direct integration uh, just doesn't cover. And if it doesn't cover it, then that's when you would go to Zapier and see, okay, uh, like in this case for Pipedrive, it was when an activity took place. Activity, or was it an event? Yeah. yeah, an activity took place. And so that's where you could use Zapier to... Um, trigger a Bonjour, Bonjour task to be created. This is really exciting because I'm going to see, I'm curious to see how you're going to trigger the other two things, the Google Sheets, and then the other thing too. This is really, really cool. I'm excited to see this. Um, let me see here. Great time to ask for your questions from us, non-IT software people. Yeah, if you guys have questions, you know, feel free. Um, we do have a direct integration with ConvertKit. Um, there's three different triggers, but I think there's more things you can do with ConvertKit through Zapier. Correct. And, um, and so, Kelly, why don't you oh. go ahead and continue? And um, I'll, let, I'll let you know whenever we get to the next pause with sure. any questions okay. that we do have. Good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about adding a filter in now because um, what we do want to make sure in this workflow is that we're only triggering our allowing the rest of our workflow to con continue so to create our bonjoro if we have a specific scenario so let's have a look um, at this so now that we've created our zap we can manage and change the zap by clicking on that button manage your zap and we click on the editor which is the drag and drop type editor that i mentioned earlier on and this is our workflow that's been built already. It's our zap that we've built already, which is new activity as the trigger and create a task in Bonjoro. So what we now want to do is create a filter within this workflow, which is going to stop our zap, zap from running unless it 
um, actually fits that criteria. So in this case, I only ever want this zap to continue if my activity subject is onboarding, which would mean if I didn't put this filter in, every time I had a new activity, this would run. And that would be crazy because you know there might be activities for a load of different things that are not related to this particular workflow. So um, really good idea to put filters in. And I know the Bonjoro integration with uh, Pipedrive and other integrations does have a filter um, option in there as well. So that's kind of handy to, to know for future reference, whether or not you're using um, a Bonjoro integration with something else or you're using Zapier or another tool. Filters are important. So now let's just take a look at the other things that we need to do. So we've built our trigger out, um, we've put our filter in, we've created our first uh, task, um, our first action. And we now want to add in um, a new row in Google Sheets and we wanna create a card in uh, Trello. So let's have a look in another video. So we just have to click on the plus at the bottom. We can search for our app which is Google Sheets. We would have to authenticate our app here. So we'd have to connect it after we've selected our um, event. So I'm just gonna stop that for a second. So um, actually that doesn't wanna stop, does it? No, we'll have to carry on there. So it looks like it's restarted. Um, so going back again, we have selected Google Sheets. Uh, we're choosing our event, which is create spreadsheet row. We're authenticating our connection by adding our Google Sheets account, which in this case is already added to our Zapier account. And then we can select a drive, but in this case, I'm gonna go straight to selecting the spreadsheet, which is my Bonjour onboarding activities sheet. And I've also selected my worksheet, and I'm just gonna show you quickly um, what that sheet looks like. It's just basically got three columns in it, first name, last name, email address. And um, we're now gonna map in the same way that we did in the previous steps where we've just clicked on the drop down. We can bring in data from our previous steps, including our Bonjoro step, but in this case, we're just using pipe drive data. Um, so we want our first name, we want our last name, and we want the email address. So you can actually just type in uh, what you're looking for, scroll through a list, and we click on uh, continue. And we can actually now test that to send some data to our Google Sheet to see whether or not that's worked. Which is confirming that it has, so, and as we can see, that's, that's pushed that straight in, like magic. So um, next we want to do Trello. So again, we just type in the name of the app and um, we find the event that we want, which is create card in this particular situation. And I've got my account authenticated already. We can choose our board. and the list that we want. And we can add in the name. So we can customize it here in this case with some dynamic data from our previous steps. And um, we've just got our first name in there and the onboarding details from our subject. And we can add in a description if we like. And we can add in some further details if we want to, but the only thing I'm gonna add is who the member is that um, is associated with that um, card, which is gonna be me. And the due date, I'm just, you know, dates and times, um, Formatting is a is another discussion, but essentially Zapier does recognize a lot of different things. So like in this case today, 
at 7 p.m. could be my um, the detail that I want to put for my due date. So I'm just going to continue that and then test and review or continue because it's the end of my workflow. And then I just want to create check that in Trello. So we can see that that's been created and we've got a due date of 20. Well, that was a couple of days ago that I did this, um, this video, uh, but you can see it's today at seven o'clock essentially. Okay. And then all we have to do after that is uh, publish it. And actually just to point out, not if you're using Zapium, not everybody will ac have access to this drafts, um, portal that you may be seeing here with the edit and publish. Um, so don't worry about that. It will be straightforward for you to see. And then we can just go ahead and name our, our zap and it's, it's turned on already. Um, so something that uh, Eric, you could actually put in the chat is um, a template to, to this. So I've shared a, a template that you could just drop in there and anybody can get access to to this just by accessing uh, the template and following the instructions. Now, um, we're running out of time and I've still got lots of stuff to tell you about. So I'm just going to be trying to be very quick now. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, I've, I've created this workflow, but essentially there are many ways that you could adapt it to um, have different tweaks in your apps, like your CRM to use different trigger points. And again, it's important to make sure that you look at the ways that you can streamline your process. So you could um, change this process so that you're actually using the native Bonjoro integration, which would then in essentially, um, in essence, take away uh, the Bonjoro step if you wanted to do that, um, to change that. So another thing to mention is you can actually create a zap straight from this create zap button. You don't have to use what I was showing you there. It's just to demonstrate how easy it is to, to work through. Um, really quickly, I just wanted to um, talk about how uh, we've just created that act, that workflow, inclu including a Bonjour action, but we may want to actually start a workflow when something happens in Bonjour, and there are lists, massive list of action, uh, sorry, trigger points that we can use in a workflow. Um, that makes things even more exciting. So you could actually trigger a workflow when a Bonjoro is watched, replied to, an email bounces, um, a user reacts to a Bonjoro, which are a couple of examples. Um, and then you could use these triggers to then create lead scoring workflows, assign points to contacts, um, and add those details to a CRM or to Airtable database. You could also move deal stages in your sales pipeline. You could create tasks in your task management system, like ClickUp or Asana. You could send notifications. You could send contacts and email with a payment link. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but there's loads of stuff that you could do. Um, so those are just a few examples. And Another cool example, uh, real quick. Uh, a customer told me this yesterday on the phone that she triggers um, when somebody watches a Bonjour video. Uh, she takes that information, passes it to, to into her CRM, which is Active Campaign, and um, she tags those people. And then she has retargeting yeah. ads, Facebook ads, to retarget those people that watch the Bonjour video, which I thought was very, very yeah. smart. And very there funny. is there is just <laughs> so much that you could do. You just need a little bit of understanding of where you can find out, like I've just ex explained to you, where you can find out the information in the app marketplace um, and use your imagination. There's loads that you can do. So um, just very quickly, a few minutes, I just wanted to go through a few things that you could automate right now if you wanted to. Let's not even worry about our, um, you know, understanding our systems and processes and all of that stuff. This is just to give you some examples. So five processes that you can automate today that I've taken from a really handy Zapier article. Um, so you could notify your team with uh, about new leads and customers. You could follow up with your team, uh, sorry, with your leads and your customers. You could create and track calendar events. You could consolidate data in a spreadsheet or database. 
you could streamline your social media. So let's have a look at each one of these just very quickly. And there's the reference there. And maybe um, Eric could just drop that in the chat, please. So notifying leads and customers. Perfect example here. So when you have a new LinkedIn lead generation form uh, that's been submitted, you could send uh, an SMS notification. You could uh, send channel notifications for new Facebook lead ads. You could post a LinkedIn lead gen form leads to Microsoft Teams. Then when we look at follow up, following up with leads and customers, we could send an email when a new lead comes in from Facebook. Um, add a LinkedIn lead gen form lead to new contacts and constant contact. And we could also send an SMS when a new lead comes in through Facebook lead ads. For calendar events, we could uh, create a Microsoft 365 event when a new, um, uh, new Calendly events have been created. We could uh, create Microsoft Outlook events for type form entries. We could also create Google Sheet rows for new Google Calendar events, um, consolidating data. I'm just going to fly through this because we've actually, I'm going to skip these because there are a lot of examples here, but we're running out of time. And I know that you'll have access to the recording and uh, the slides as well. Um, so you can just flick through those. Um, but just to leave you with one extra one to streamline your social media, um, you could post Twitter uh, content when something on Facebook has been posted and vice versa. <clears throat> There's so much that you could do. So I just want to give you some, um, some extra resources, which uh, maybe Eric could just drop in the chat quickly. I want to give Eric some time to chat right at the end. So on my website, uh, I've got a whole bunch of different resources that you can get access to on the free resources tab. Um, you can please connect with me with on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, also, I have some YouTube videos as well and some great resources on my blog. Um, as Eric mentioned and I mentioned earlier, I've also got uh, a book called Automate It with Zapier. You can get it through the Publisher Pact or on Amazon. And I also mentioned that I've got an automation academy that's launching soon. Um, this is the link to the, the wait list um, if you want to jump on that and hear more information about that. And finally, um, this is quite cool. I'm doing a survey and collecting lots of information from anybody that is using business process automation or is not using uh, automation in the business at all. Um, I'm just trying to gather some information that's going to help me um, plow forward with being able to give better content to, to people on my website and through webinars and things like that. And I'm also running a survey as part of that, uh, sorry, a competition as part of that, where you can win a few prizes. So my book, and I've also got a, a limited edition comic. And um, I use a little guy called Robbie the Robot in my marketing. And he, um, you could win a replica version of, a, of, uh, of him. So that's pretty much it from me. Um, Eric, sorry, I know you've only got like two minutes, but, um, <laughs> um, and anybody who wants to ask any questions. This is bad. This is so terrific. Uh, I can't thank you enough, <laughs> Kelly, for sharing all of this really valuable information. I'm going to be documenting all of my steps that I take to do various tasks. I feel like if I had some automation in place, I could easily get back couple of hours a week um, which would be huge you know you add that over time and uh, you know that that's that's several hours a month you know several hours, hours a year uh, just by removing a lot of the manual tasks of like copy and pasting one data from one you know application onto a spreadsheet there or, or, or whatever so I'm definitely going to be looking at what can I automate and, and just go through the process like you did and figure out okay this is what I can automate let me figure out how to do it and, and just get it done like uh, everybody, like uh, Kelly said, the uh, replay is going to go out probably in about an hour. There's several links that I posted in the chat room. She's got a book, uh, Introduction to Automation eBook, that you can find on her website. I included the link there. There's also a uh, sales process eBook, Automating Your Sales Process. There's a link there. There's also the Automation Academy waitlist. Uh, there is a link there. Um, I suggest you follow Kelly Goss on LinkedIn. She posts valuable information and cool tips every day. 
uh, I follow her on LinkedIn. And um, hey, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach Please out to do. Kelly. Uh, definitely I recommend that. checking out her, her website. What 10 seconds real quick. Bonjour Testimonios is now live inside your account. Uh, you can easily collect, gather, and publish video or text testimonials. I'm going to drop drop the uh, YouTube video that shows you how to do that. And uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. It went live in everybody's account today, regardless of uh, what plan you're on. And we're just really trying to make it very uh, easy and very fun. You know, very fun to... Uh, send out a testimonial request and get a video testimonial. So we're, we think it's a great product. If you have any feedback for us, don't hesitate to, to let us know. Um, you can let myself know at Eric, E-R-I-C at Bonjuro, or just reach, reach out to us through the live chat on Intercom on our website. Uh, but there is the YouTube video that explains step-by-step -step how to do it. Uh, but like I said, if you have Bonjuro, it's in your account right now at the very top called Testimonials. Um, everybody, thank you so much for joining in. Any last minute questions before we close the, uh, the webinar? Will those links above in the chat be sent over in the webinar and slides? Um, no, you'll just see the replay. Um, I'm going to try to add the links. That's a pretty good question, Tyler. I'll see if I can add the links on the email that goes out. My, I don't think I'll be able to. Um, but I'll see if I can do that right now as we're still talking. Any any other questions? If, if you can't, um, Eric, and anybody wants a copy of the slides, find me on LinkedIn. I will email you the slides happily. Actually, there okay. either. I, I actually I put everything I put awesome. everything in there already. Yeah, yeah. So they're in there. They'll be in the email that goes out with the replay link. Mm. I forgot that I added that in there, but there that's. You know, that's when you prepare like too soon. You know, I did this like on Monday. We, well, I, we were very prepared for this and then it all kind of like went a bit, uh, <laughs> I don't know what was happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was cool, the happier with Zapier slogan. I didn't know about that. So I'll definitely remember that. And There's one takeaway, Zapier makes you happier. <laughs> yeah yeah no there's two takeaways uh i learned the word reverie yeah. uh i'm probably pronouncing that wrong um but now i know what that that means it means like dreamy fantasy infused quality so thank you so much for kalitha uh for sharing that with us so now now i knew that yeah um it's been a few years since i had a reverie you know kids when you have kids the reverie days kind of go away you know they kind of vanish so <laughs> all right Thanks, everybody. Yes, slides. Um, can you email them out? This was great. The replay link will go out probably in about an hour. Look uh, in your inbox. And in the email, you'll see a link to the replay. And you'll see all the links that I included in the chat, all the resources that I included. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Kelly, any last uh, minute Just words? thanks, everybody who joined us today. I hope it was useful. Um, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Bonjoro. Thanks, everybody, for being awesome. Happy Wednesday. And maybe we'll see each other again soon. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Kelly. All right. Bye. Have a great night. Bye.